Hello. Welcome to today's installment of A Treasury of Daily Prayer. Hopefully this Monday finds you healthy, happy, and somewhat sane during this time of social distancing. Uh, before we begin our daily devotion, um, just would like to give you a, a few of uh, e or informational things uh, for, for the coming week. Uh, first of all, uh, we invite you to join with us uh, at noon on Sundays, our video Bible study. And uh, that is on the Zoom platform. If you're interested in participating in that, uh, you can check out our church website. And I will have another announcement this week and uh, a link posted up there that you can uh, hit and join us for our Sunday Bible study. We have it at noon. If you're wondering why we don't have it immediately after the live stream service, the reason for that is this. Uh, I would like to have it as soon as possible after. Uh, there are some technical things that I need to take care of with the live stream and the recording um, right after right after the service. And so uh, that gives me the half hour, gives me some time um, also to get set up for the Bible study on Zoom. We hope you can join us this last Sunday. Uh, we did, uh, uh, throughout as people joined in, we did end up with 10 in our Bible study discussion. Uh, this next week, uh, we're going to be uh, um, discussing and looking at uh, opportunities we have as God's people, as Christians, to show our love uh, during this time of social distancing and crisis. Um, and so, uh, hopefully you'll join in with us on that. Um, we're continuing uh, just informational purposes. This next Sunday is going to be um, uh, is going to be April 26th, last Sunday of the month. Uh, we are planning on going with the status quo through April. Um, our church leadership, we plan on meeting um, before the month is over to determine a course of action or how try to plot a course of action. Uh, for the month of May. Um, and especially we have some work to do too, in case you haven't heard. Uh, Pastor John Girock returned the call to Trinity in winter. And so we will be going about the process of get, again of calling a new pastor. So we will be contacting uh, Pastor Hirsch trying to determine how we can um, how we can conduct a call meeting and still uh, uh, maintain the safe distance protocols. Maybe we do it over the Zoom platform. I don't know. But we're going to get a hold of him and then the congregation will decide whether we're going to extend another call to the field or uh, make a request to the assignment committee at the seminary. And so we'll keep you informed and apprised of what's going on. Also, uh, I just want you to know that uh, um, I think probably uh, your pastor is going as stir crazy um, as as many, most people are, and I look forward to getting back to normal normal meetings, face to face contact, um, probably even more than you do. I am happy that so many people um, are missing and desiring uh, this fellowship and this gathering or around each other, and especially God's Word and Sacrament. And uh, one of the many things where God shows us uh, and leads us and strengthens us and helps us to appreciate the blessings that he's given us. Uh, with those things being said, uh, we'll begin with today's devotion on the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, 
he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. The holy who? Asked the man in my instruction class. Spirits were something out of science fiction and ghosts were material for TV cartoons. To talk to him about a spirit and a holy one at that would take some doing. But he learned and appreciated it as the Holy Spirit worked in his heart through the word. Later, he became not only a member of the congregation, but of the church council as well. As we enter the third article of the Apostles' Creed and examine Luther's masterful explanation of that article, let's look at the Holy Spirit in whom we say we believe. Don't be fooled. The word spirit does not imply that he is not real. He's not some face, faceless force flitting around out there, some impersonal energy that emerges and evaporates now and then. Though we cannot see him with the eye, we can feel him with the heart. That's one reason why his name comes from the Greek word pneuma, meaning air. We who use pneumatic tires and pneumatic drills understand that. Though we cannot see the air that fills the tire and drills drives the drill, it is very real. The Holy Spirit is a He, the third person in the triune God, true God with the Father and the Son, of equal power and majesty with them. As a real person, he teaches the word of truth, glorifies the Savior who stands at the center of truth, and convicts sinners so that they realize their need for saving truth. As a real person, he cannot be lied to. As Ananias and his wife Sapphira, the first hypocrites in the New Testament church, discovered to their dismay. As a real person, he can be grieved by sinful responses to his work, as Paul warned the Ephesians not to do. To those who don't know God, he remains forever a mystery. The Holy Who? But to those who confess, I believe in the Holy Spirit, he is a necessity, a divine person just as great and glorious as the Father and the Son. His work is just as great and glorious as that of the Father and the Son. In fact, without his work, all the efforts of the Father and the Son for our salvation would have been in vain. In eternity, God the Father planned for the redemption of the world he had not yet made. In time, God the Son came into that ruined world and gave his blood as the ransom for its sin. But without the work of the Holy Spirit, none would ever benefit. Salvation would be like some prescription gathering dust on the druggist's, behalf, on the druggist's shelf, with no one ever knowing about it or wanting to use it. Theologians call the necessary work of the Spirit sanctification. We might spell it S-A-I-N-T-I-F-I-C-A-T-I-O-N, for that's what it really is. No, we aren't talking about his turning us into super-Christians who have days named after us in the church here. We're talking about real saints, people whom the Holy Spirit has made holy, by bringing them to the fountain filled with Jesus' blood and plunging them beneath that flood. The vital work of God the Holy Spirit is to create faith in the sinner's heart, so that the redemption planned by God the Father and prepared by God the Son becomes his very own. Without the Spirit's work, no one could stand as sanctified before God or seek to serve him in his kingdom. Do we sense the divine love behind our sainthood? God didn't merely create salvation by putting it into the world and then leaving it to the blind working of fate for us to find it. He didn't drop it down from heaven and then hope for our bumbling efforts to unearth it. 
he knew there was only one way. In saving love, he takes the final step toward us and sends his Holy Spirit to sanctify us. Our confession, I believe in the Holy Spirit, is tribute to divine love and grace. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for sending your Spirit to work faith in our hearts so that we are numbered among your saints on earth and in heaven. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.